Now that's the way to start our Reformation service. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this, on this Affirmation of Baptism service and Reformation Sunday service. Glad you can join us on Facebook and YouTube or reading through the service uh, that you get in the mail at your home. Thank you for continuing your support for the mission of First English with your gifts and offerings. They keep our church going and our ministry going in, in these very different times. Today, we celebrate the Reformation of the Church started by Martin Luther back in 1517. And we also celebrate with Carly and Allison, who are affirming their baptisms today. We continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on others before examining ourselves. We place our needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth of God. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Mm. Our opening hymn is A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Hymn number 505. Number 505.
continue with the call to worship, which is Psalm 46, which is uh, what Martin, Lu Martin Luther based a mighty fortress uh, on. So, holy people of God, called through the gospel of Christ, enlightened by the Spirit, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. God is our sure defense, our shelter and help in trouble. God never stands far off. We stand unshaken, the solid earth cracks and volcanoes slide into the sea. When breakers rage and mountains tremble in the swell, a river delights in the city of God, home of the Holy One most high. With God there, the city stands. God defends it under attack. Nations rage and empires fall. God speaks, the earth melts. The Lord of power is with us. Jacob's God will shield us. Come, see the wonders God does across the earth. Everywhere stopping wars, smashing, crushing, burning all the weapons of war. He still. No near God, high over the nations, nations, over all the earth. The Lord of power is with us. Jacob's God will shield us. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit renewing the church in every age and poured out on us today. Keep us steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort us in times of trial. Defend us against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. John chapter 8, starting at verse 31. Jesus speaks of truth and freedom as spiritual realities known through his word. He reveals the truth that sets people free from sin. John 8, 31 to 36. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Time for the children's sermon. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today we celebrate Reformation Day, a day when Martin Luther started the Reformation of the Church over 500 years ago. Now, Reformation is just a big church word for changing to make it better. And what the church had lost way back when was the key message of Jesus, which is, did you hear what I said? No? Maybe if I get closer to the microphone. I said, how about then? No? Well, how about now? Let me try one more time. God loves you. Did you hear that? Barely, right? It's hard to hear when I just mouth the words or whisper softly, isn't it? Well, the church 500 years ago had lost the message, God loves you. So Martin Luther decided to turn up the volume. He reminded the people of his church in Wittenberg, Germany, that God loves them always and forever. And that message spread throughout Germany and then Italy and France and Switzerland and all over. God loves you. And there is nothing you can do or say to get God to love you more. And there's nothing you can do or say to get God to love you less. God loves you deeply and always and forever. Now that is very good news for us to hear, not just on a Reformation Day when we celebrate the Reformation of the Church, but it's good news for us to hear every single day. And it is news for us to tell others, not, not mouthing the words or whispering the words, God, love, sorry, God loves you, but turning up the volume all the way to 11 as we shout, God loves you always and forever. Right? That's good news. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your love and know you will never, ever stop loving us. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, All Hallows' Evening is just six days away, Halloween. So I want you to imagine it's Halloween night. It is dusk, and a cold wind is blowing. And you look outside and you see a figure wrapped in a long black cloak hurrying down the street. The dark figure approaches a door, a large door, and pulls out a hammer and starts nailing a piece of paper to the church door. On All Hallows' Eve, All Saints' Eve, October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther goes to the church door in Wittenberg, Germany, which functions as kind of the village bulletin board. They didn't have Facebook back then or anything like that. They had to nail things to the, to the door so people would read them. So he does that. He nails a piece of paper to the church door. And this is a list of 95 theses, 95 points of debate, and he wants to spark a debate on the practice of granting indulgences, which is basically buying forgiveness from the church. And these 95 theses catch the imagination of Christians in Germany and all over Europe. In little more than two weeks, copies of the 95 theses show up in the Netherlands, and France, and Italy, and Spain. Martin Luther is risking his calling as a monk and his position as professor at Wittenberg University. He loves the church, which is why he became a monk and a professor of theology and New Testament. Luther has no intention of starting a new church, but he believes what he reads in Paul's letter to the church in Rome, the good news, we are justified by God's grace as a gift through the redemption in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. And then Martin also got this message from Ephesians, where Paul writes, 
We are saved by grace through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. So Martin understands and knows you can't buy forgiveness or grace or faith. They are all gifts from God. And so he can't stand by while the church is attempting to sell forgiveness. Even if it may, means risking his job and challenging the church. So the Reformation began as an act against both the Pope and the Emperor. Christians are saved by grace alone. We are set free by God's grace alone. And the scriptures are the basis for all this Christian, all our Christian belief. Not the king, not the priests, not the pope. So today is a day for remembering Martin Luther, the Reformation movement, and the countless Christians who kept this vision alive year after year, century after century. And the ELCA, the church of what we are part of, and First English here in Wausau, are part of this Reformation movement. You and I are the great, 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 great grandchildren in faith of Martin and all who took up the cause for God's word. Now that root, the root of the word reformation is reform. We've heard that word, right? Tax reform, health care reform, school reform. To reform something is to make something over and hopefully better. Not just a slight adjustment, adjustment, but a new birth and a new life. There is another kind of reformation we remember today. On the day we were baptized, you and I were reformed. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reformed into children of God inheritors of eternal life. So on this Reformation Sunday, we celebrate with Carly and Allison as they affirm their baptisms. When you guys were baptized 13 plus, 13-ish years ago, God named you and claimed you and reformed you. And promises were made by God and by your parents and your godparents. And today, you get to stand up here by the baptismal font where you were baptized and state those promises yourself. Today, you affirm the God who created the whole universe loves you. Today, you affirm that through the death and resurrection of Jesus, you are reformed into a child of God. Today, you affirm through the power of God's Spirit that through the power of God's Spirit that you promise to continue following Jesus and being reformed every day of your life, dying to sin and rising each day uh, as a new creation in Christ. For 2,000 years, God has welcomed all of us through the waters of baptism. And this is your day to stand, affirm your faith, and promise to follow Jesus as best you can, helped and supported by God. God's grace has sustained our faith and our church for 2,000 years. God's grace will sustain your faith, too. Now, during the past three years of confirmation classes, we read many stories from the Bible. So I pray that God's word, the Bible, will stay a big part of your life. The Bible is for times of joy, but also when life takes a sharp turn and leads through dark valleys. So I pray you will continue to grow and know and love and serve Jesus. I pray you will have a faith-filled and abundant life. After the service, you will receive a cross as a gift. So I would advise you to put that cross in a special place where you see it every day. And remember the promise that Jesus is always with you. The message of the cross is that God loves you deeply gives you always. So Carly and Allison, the Lord of hosts is with you. God is your sure defense, your shelter, your help in any kind of trouble. Jesus promises you will never go through the darkness alone. So 
do not be afraid. Your future rests in God. And I say thanks be to God for both of you on this very special day. Amen. Carly and Allison, I invite you to come over here and stand by the baptismal font. Perfect, right there. Now, as they make their promises before God today, those of you who are, have affirmed your baptisms out there, I want you to re remember these promises that you made back when you stood up here and affirmed your baptism and, and recommit yourself to those promises. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for Carly and Allison, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. I present Carly Jo and Allison Victoria, who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in this community of faith. Uphold Carly and Allison in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Carly and Allison, I ask you to, prof to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do, re do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Carly and Allison, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ, Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Joe and Don, would you come up and stand behind your daughters? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God. That through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Put your hands on Carly's head. Stir up in Carly Joe the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Stir up in Allison, Victoria, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us rejoice with these new sisters in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Congratulations. It has been a pleasure having you in confirmation class for three years. Uh, really enjoyed having them, um, even though they got a little chatty sometimes, not always on topic, but that's okay. You have to go back to your seats. We continue with the prayers of intercession. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth, Gerald, and Bishop elect Ann, Pastor Jack and Wani Parish, and missionary Pastor Alex. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and waters roar, may we care for this world as a holy habitation for all living things, sustain people and lands recovering from natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide areas of the world divided by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking, and protect people in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Release those living in bondage to debt, chronic pain, or addiction. Grant healing to people who are ill, especially Jim and Dolores, Delbert, Kathy, Janie, Mary, Sherry and Dave, Kay, Nicole and Tammy, Melinda, Bonnie, Lynn, Shelley, Selena, Jordan, Eleanor, Butch, Gary, Spencer and Ron, Leroy, all those with COVID-19. We pray for hospital personnel, medical researchers, doctors and nurses, especially Deb, Holly, Joy, Kara, Taylor, Lily, 
Olivia, Todd, and Mike. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their trust in Jesus, who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unite us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, now hear the prayers of your people. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and people who work to renew the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and embrace in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray, God of life, you give us these gifts of the earth, resources of our life and our labor. Take them, offered in great thanksgiving, and use them to heal creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by God's Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 779, Amazing Grace, number 779.
through Jesus Christ, our peace and the spirit of truth be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Share the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.